for Make a Mess. Today we're painting the Daisy Bee project, which is a really cute project. It's a great starter project. It's simple to do. You learn some technique and it turns out super cute. I love this little bee. Can you see him? So you may have gotten your box already in the mail um, and you may have opened it. If you have opened it, that's fine. If you haven't, we'll open it together. Um, if this is your first kit, then if you're interested in painting on an easel like this one, you can go to the YouTube video for instructions on how to build your awesome Make a Mess box into an easel. If you already built it into an easel before and you want to skip that step, that's fine. If you prefer working flat, that's fine too. So when you open the box, you'll see um, the little boxes that say stand me up. In those little boxes have all your goodies. You've got your brushes and your paint colors and everything you need to complete your project. So you just wanna take all those out. And you'll also find a paper that has your step-by-step -step visual instructions in case you get stuck or you just need to see it a little closer. Feel free to pause this video at any time if you need to catch up to me. All right, so the first step is gonna be the background. Um, you can do it as blue as you like it or as gray as you like it or anywhere in between. Uh, on the original, I used maybe, I don't know, mostly gray with a little bit of blue, but honestly, it's however you like it. That's the beauty of art. So all I'm doing in my palette is putting a little bit of gray and a bit of blue, um, I guess a good amount of each. And then I'm dipping mostly in the gray and a little bit in blue. And I'm gonna mix the colors right on the background, right on the board. Alternatively, if you like the idea of being able to control your color a little bit more, you can mix it um, in your palette too, if you want. But I just kind of like, if it feel like it needs a bit more of any color, just go and dip more in that color for the next round. And then go, I'm going diagonally, see if one corner to corner, I'm going diagonally back and forth. And then I just kind of wrap it around the edge too. And I love just the mix of the blue and the gray together. It makes a beautiful like blue gray tone, like a cool gray, which I find really appealing and pretty and it looks good in the house. <laughs> And there you have your background. It may take a few minutes to let it dry, so you can just uh, take a little break. Um, or if you're super eager, if you don't want to have a tea break, then um, you can use your hair dryer and it'll dry in a few seconds. So that's kind of the easy way to do it too. Either way it works. I'm gonna have a break. For this next step, you're going to need um, the yellow and the orange to get started. Now you can either pour a little bit in your palette or you can um, just dip right into the container. If you're doing that though, you want to make sure that you dip just sort of the tip of the brush. The brush that you need is the dry brush, this guy here. And you just want to make sure you dip sort of these edges of the bristles. You don't want to dip right deep into the paint because then you'll have too much paint on there. Um, and you also don't want to like stir the paint or scoop the paint. It would just like dip the paint just a little bit. It's much easier to start with a little paint and add layers than it is to um, get too much on there right from the beginning and then try and control it. So see now I'm just dipping like just a little bit, just the end of my brush in the paint. You can dip and you can even dab off on your, on your palette a little bit or if you're using a paper plate, and that's fine too. So I dipped, I dabbed off, and then I'm gonna decide where I'm gonna put my center of my flower. Now in the original, you can see it's sort of like, if you were to cut your canvas in quarters, it's in the top left quarter of the canvas. Um, now all of these are gonna be a little different, so it doesn't have to be the exact same position, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's always something that we have to stress. So go ahead and dab. Don't swipe this brush, let's dab it until you've got a 
like a semicircle, like a crescent shape for a happy little crescent. There we go, something like that. And I'm using the yellow and I'm just dabbing. Then from that crescent shape, you're gonna you're gonna still dab, but you're gonna dab upwards in sort of a semicircle shape. A little bit more like bumped out than the first one. See, this one's kind of just like a slight curve, and then this one's just a little bit more of a curve. And then you can start filling it in. Don't worry about it being a solid color. You don't need it to be bright, solid yellow. It's nice to have some of that background color shining through. Um, when the blue gray tone mixes with the yellow, it's just gonna help add shading in our center part of the flower that we're doing right now. So um, yeah, don't stress about that. That's, that's good, it's a good thing. Um, and then once you've got it all filled in, we'll add a bit of our orange. I didn't even wash my brush, that's fine. You don't really have to. Dip just the tip in, dab a little off somewhere. And now let's refer to the original for a second. You can look at your um, printout too, if that helps. See how the, the orange is more in the bottom area right in here, can you see that? Um, that's gonna be like our shading. So a little bit more of that orange happens in this area, okay? So same technique. Little dab, and in more of the bottom area. See how mine looks kind of um, dotty? Sometimes with these brushes, especially when they're brand new, they need to be sort of like beaten up a little bit. You can, you can make them fluffier by kind of dabbing off. Okay, see how it's like a little bit more fluffy? That's good. And then it blends better, see? Oh yeah, and I didn't dip again. I just used the paint that I had put on there that made it kind of polka dotty. And I'm just blending it with that. Less is more when you're adding paint. And we'll go ahead and let that dry for a few minutes. Um, and we still have some more colors to add into that center part, but we do want it to dry a little bit first, okay? <laughs> Something just happened, and I just want to note this. Sometimes in these little paint pots, this, the acrylic paint can separate a little bit sometimes um, if it's been sitting in there. So if you see that the paint is, I don't know if you can see it, like there's kind of a clear liquidy paint there too, you may want to just give it a stir first, or I guess you could even put the lid on and hold it and shake it. I'm already into stirring it, so here we go. Now, if you use your brush to stir it, look at my brush, it's just covered in paint. You don't want to use this brush like this. Make sure you get a paper towel and um, just get the excess paint off your brush. I'm going to wipe it on my feet because that's what I do. Paper towel, jeans, same thing. All right, clean-ish brush and stirred paint, ready to go. So I'm dipping the edge of the brush in the paint and I'm going to go from the center of our flower out. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just doing two little marks to give myself a guideline. And that's gonna be the width of my petal of my daisy. And these daisy petals are quite long. So we're going to go from there. I'm just holding it on the edge and I'm just going to map out where I want it to go. So it's going to go down. It's going to get a little wider as it goes, as it goes out or down and the petal will get a little wider and it comes to a round end. You can always go a bit bigger. That's okay. You might even notice on the printer that my one I corrected too. That's fine. You can always go bigger. They're always going to be just a bit different, so don't stress if it's not the exact same as mine. Mine won't be the exact same as my original because they never are. That's the beauty of art. 
So there's our first petal. It's really just like almost like an oval shape. Can you see that? It just it's not closed at the top and it's definitely skinnier at the top than, than the bottom. So it looks like that. Um, just dipping my brush again. And then from that one with that petal in the center, that's pretty like straight. Then you're going to start curving them slightly. So any petals going on the side will curve just a little bit towards that petal, just a little bit, and then a little teeny bit more. And then we'll just see like a piece of the petal. Now on your printout, there is um, an outlined flower picture that might help a little bit if, if you need to look at something a bit closer. So here I'm just doing my petals, trying to make them about the same length. And I'm running these two lines pretty parallel, but as it gets down to the base, see they have the same curve, but as it gets down to the base, you're gonna go out just a little bit more and then curve the petal at the bottom. I'm holding the brush sort of on the edge. If you hold it this way, it fills in. If you hold it on the edge, you can get like thin, thinner lines. Don't worry about that. We're gonna fill it in anyway. Um, just showing you how to use it. And then once you have that same direction, you can go right next, do the next one. These ones can overlap a little bit, like into the other petal. They don't, you don't have to leave a space necessarily at the base of the petal, at the center. They can be touching. Um, and then you're gonna curve down. And this is getting a little bit skinnier now. So it's kind of becoming sort of a side angle of the petal as we get higher up. And then maybe squeeze one more petal in this guy. You, can, you can't really see much of what's happening close up, but maybe he kind of just goes out a little bit like this. Petals on this one are a bit smaller than my original, so I might get a little bit bigger, but what if? The beauty of art. So these petals all curve the same direction, kind of in to that center petal. And then these ones on the other side will curve the opposite direction. Just slightly when you're close to it, to the center, and they can get more and more out of the It's okay to leave spaces in between and it's okay for those spaces not to be the same size. Um, it's nature, right? It's not going to be all perfect. So it will make it look more realistic. Don't sweat the small stuff if it doesn't seem like a perfect daisy. And this one sort of goes off the page a bit so you can you can either like just stop it and skip and then start again, or you could even wrap that petal right around the edge of the canvas and then come up. That would be cute too. And come up. And then another little one. This guy's just gonna kind of peek out. I'm just gonna have him kind of coming like this. And maybe just a slight little piece of the mess that's noticeable in there. All right, so we have it all mapped out. That's great, that's a big step. And um, if there's anything you wanna edit at this point, you can by just making them a little bit longer if need be, because we're filling in. So anything going sort of on the inside will get covered up anyway. It's a good, easy way to get little parts that you need to fix up kind of covered up, that's fine. Um, and then still with this brush, you can add in your white, first coat of white. And it's okay, again, if your background color shows through, we're actually gonna use some blue shading um, as our next step. So it's fine for it to have a little bit of that dark blue in there. Again, it makes it feel realistic. I'm always doing my brush strokes in the direction of sort of the veins of the flower might go. You know how I get those little lines in it? And go ahead and fill in.
And then once they're filled in, we can move on to the shading. Cute! <laughs> Just want to show you up close what that looks like. It's okay for it to have some see-throughness. I think it really helps the shading. It just does it naturally. You're going to want to get the blue out next. That light blue. It's in a smaller container. And you don't need to wash your brush. That's fine. You can double dip with white and blue, no problem. And you don't need your daisy to be all the way dry either. I'm just dipping a little tiny bit of paint, you can see. And then I'm gonna start pulling it through the flower from the center of the flower outwards. And this is really just a faint detail. It's just adding a teeny bit of shading. And that's really going to be more just in the center, closer to the center of the flower, and then coming down into the center of the petals, but it doesn't even have to make it all the way till the end. It kind of just gives us a little shading and a little bit more realistic feeling. If your um, daisy isn't all the way dry and it's lifting from your white paint away, then you may want to let it dry a little bit, or you can double dip a little bit in the white and it might help too to blend it. So I'm just going from the top down. Maybe a little bit in the sky like that. A little bit in the sky. You can turn your brush sideways for the skinnier details. Um, then just wipe off the excess of blue with a paper towel or on your jeans like I like to do. Dip back into the white and then kind of go over the tips of your of your um, petals just to brighten them up a little bit with like a second coat of white and just pump it up. So you have each petal just gets really vibrant. I'm just carefully going around the edges and pulling some of that white in. You can even break up, like we go around the outside and fix up like edges and stuff if you need to. Just blowing. guy a little bit better because I feel like he's a bit small compared to his neighbors. <laughs> there we go. That's what's fun about art is you don't have to, you don't have to expect it to be perfect. I know some of us really feel that way, but it's kind of just nice to play with it and let it happen as you're doing art and as your project is progressing and developing, just letting things happen. You can see I'm like elongating some of the petals a little bit. That's fine. Just kind of fix it up and edit it as you go. It's really coming along. You can see the daisies starting to come to life and really popping nice and bright. And then I like to put a little bit sort of along the tops up here, because if you imagine the light coming in from the top of your painting, that's why we have this orange shadow in here and the brightness is up here, right? So I put a little bit of the bright white at the top of the petals too, just so it looks like the light's kind of glistening off the, those first two like skinnier petals just a bit. Along the top edge of each of those two is good. There. On that note, I think the petals look pretty good. And we can move on to the next set. Gorgeous. At this stage, when you're done your daisy petals, it's a good time to just let it dry and maybe take a peek around your workspace. So I have four colors of paint without lids. This one was just resting. Um, make sure you put all your lids back on. It's a good idea. You can always use the extra paint for different projects. And we'll still need um, some of that yellow in a little bit. And we'll need the white again too. But
but I think we should put the lids on all of them because that's how mistakes happen. Not mistakes, accidents. The big difference. <laughs> um, and then the other thing you can do, there's the lid. The other thing you can do at this point while you're waiting for it to dry is give your brushes a wash. So I have my um, white and blue petal brush to wash and my orange dabber brush to wash. And we're gonna need that one soon. So it's time to go do a quick little cleanup and we will meet back here. For the next step, you're going to wanna get the green paint out and open. And we're gonna do the stem of the flower. And it's really just gonna come, it's kinda of hard to see I think on the screen, but it's gonna come from between a couple of the flower petals and then just right down off the canvas. It's not nothing fancy. It's just a stem. I didn't add any like grasses or leaves or anything. I'm just keeping it simple. If you wanted to add that, this is your artwork. You can go ahead and do that. The beauty of art. So I'm dipping my brush in the green and taking a little bit off so that it's not too much paint. And I'm gonna hold it straight up and down, just using the edge of the brush. And I'm gonna squeeze in between the petals so that um, I'm not getting it on the petals, but I'm just kind of making it seem like the stem is coming from the back side of this yellow center of the flower. I'm just getting really close to the petals, but trying not to get green on them. Can you see that? And the stem is going to be kind of the same width all the way down. It can be a teeny bit thicker as it goes down. And notice I'm just using the edge of the brush to sort of guide where I'm going to place it. And then you can even do that if you want for the other side of your petal that's just gonna run, I mean, sorry, of your stem, it's just gonna run parallel up. And then when it hits the petal of the flower at that same thickness, you can sort of just stop and then carefully outline around the petal. And then fill in in between your two lines. You can do that just by holding your brush flat now. Unless uh, it's skinnier than your, than your brush, then you might need to fill it in the other way. But mine's right about the same size as my brush, so that makes it super easy to fill in. Handy dandy. Try and do nice long strokes. Now there's a couple of things you can do if you want to shade your stem. You can either leave it as is, or you can add just a bit of white. And for this, you might want to add it to your palette. I'm just going to sneak a little bit off the edge of the paint pot and then take a teeny double dip in the green. So I've got white and green on my brush and I'm gonna take that up the center just a little bit of the main part of the stem and then let the edges be a bit darker green. I'm not going all the way up underneath because I think it'd be too sh shadowy under there to have that highlight. If you like the idea of making a little bit shadowy under there, the way you can darken your green is by going back to your um, original dark blue color from the background. You can double dip a little bit of that in with the green too. And um, so I'm just taking like a teeny tiny bit of that and a teeny tiny bit of the green. Probably better to double dip in the palette if you wanna keep your paints for other projects. <laughs> You know, and then you can use that to shadow underneath your flower a little bit if you like that idea. You don't have to. These are kind of little extra pointers and tips and depends on how much shading you want to do or if you just want to leave it all solid green like we first did, that's fine too. You could even have the slightest bit of a shadow casting where you want here. I hold it on my edge of my brush. There, 
hair kind of looks like it's casting a shadow. Can you see that? There, stem is done. The flower project is coming along nicely. It looks really good. We've got our stem in there and the whole, pretty much the whole flower. We're gonna add a teeny bit of shading still in the center part of the flower. And then the exciting part, we have add our cute little bee. <laughs> Um, so let's get started on a um, little bit of highlighting and shading in there in that yellow center of the flower. <laughs> so if you take a peek at the original, I'm going to hold it really close so you can see it. See how there's some green in the center and then there's a little bit of white up at the top here. There's some highlighting and there's green kind of dabs down at the bottom. That's gonna be what we're doing. So we're gonna add a little bit of green, just a bit. And this is almost optional. If you like your center the way it is, you don't have to add the green. You can just leave it or you can add just the white. Um, but if you wanna have a little bit of green in there, I'll show you how to do it. So back to our dry brush. Um, and I did a couple of things. One is I used the end of the brush, the hard part. Where did my green go? Um, Sorry, the green's over here. <laughs> I used the, the hard end of the brush. I dipped just the end in very, very slightly. And then I just gently dabbed along the bottom of that crescent shape that we originally did for the flower. I'm just dabbing, dab, dab, dab. Here, let me show you. So I'm really just like dabbing my brush. When you first dip it, it'll have a bigger glob, so it'll do bigger dabs. And then as you sort of dab your way out, it'll make smaller and smaller dots. And I'm just kind of adding it in along the bottom of that crescent shape. I like to put it like a little bit more on one side or the other, and then sort of just like gradually move away from that sort of thicker part and move on. Um, you can kind of note that this one I did the opposite way. I put heavier green on this side and then just thinned it out as I went that way. That's fine too. Okay, and as you um, complete the little dabs, then the other thing you can do if you want to add a bit of green in there is you can double dip your brush with the green and just a little tiny bit of yellow. You may want to pour just a dab on your um, palette, especially if you're using your um, paint pots again, if you want to save your paint so it doesn't mix all sorts of colors. So I'm dipping, honestly, like just the hairs of the brush, like just a teeny tiny bit of yellow and a teeny tiny tiny bit of green. Can you see that? So it's just like a little bit of green and a little tiny bit of yellow. And then, what I'm gonna do with that is dab up what up at the top here where it would be like the very center of that. If you were looking at it straight on, it would be a circle. And then the very middle of that circle, it has green. So it was almost, almost at the top, but the very top is kind of the other side of the center. So the center of it would actually be a little bit lower than the top bump. You don't want it to be very, very, very noticeable. It's just to blend in with the yellow tones and be very slight bit of green in the center. So don't overdo it. Don't just dab straight up into green. Just mix it a little bit with the yellow. And then that, just a very slight little bit in the middle and then that's good. That's all you need. Leave it. Um, next little step is going to be the highlight, which will we'll grab our white and it's gonna be the exact same thing. So I didn't even wash my brush. If it blends with the yellow and or the green of it, that's fine. And I'm gonna do a highlight just along the top. So imagine this, the light coming from the top, right? Remember we cast some shadows underneath. The light's coming from the top. So we're gonna add a teeny little highlight of white I'm dabbing with the bristles just along the top crescent of the center of the flower. Can you see that? I'll bring it a little closer. And on that note, the flower is complete and we're gonna 
buzz into our next step. Let's take a look at this bee. He's really quite simple. He's the shape of like a bean almost. You see his little shape? And he's really gonna be just dabbed with this dry brush. We're just gonna ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, so here's our flower. I'm gonna get the black paint out. And I'm gonna dip just the tip in the black paint because we don't want a lot of paint. And I'm gonna very, very carefully dab the body of the bee on. You can see I'm kind of using just the edge of the brush and it's okay because they're kind of fuzzy. It's okay if the, the ed edges of your bee isn't like an outline. Makes them a bit more realistic if he's a little fuzzy. And if it's very like, you can see in this part here, it's kind of like little pieces that aren't quite connected. Then you just turn your brush and use the edge the other way like that. There we go. Just like a little black fuzzy um, oval shape or bean shape um, is our first step to the bee. Easy peasy. And let that dry for a second and you're gonna get your detail brush next. So the next brush that you need is this guy with the point. So find him while, it's, while you're letting it dry. And you can always refer to the visual instruction step if you need to look at the bee a little bit closer. It's not a bad idea. So back to the bee. What we're going to do now is we're going to give him a little tiny bit of a round head just at the end of our bean shape and fill it in. And with these brushes, the harder you push, the thicker your line's going to be. So the lighter you push, the thinner your line's gonna be. So you might wanna practice that on the side piece of paper. So I'm gonna do his hind leg. I'm gonna push lightly. I'm gonna come diagonally down and then kind of has a knee before it goes back. So see the two different directions? And then you can even have like the teeniest little foot if you want. Um, and then we're gonna do just two teeny tiny, I'm barely pushing, I'm just letting the like edge of the bristles of the brush just kind of touch. Two little antennas, a little leg that goes out and then down on the one side, maybe a little bit longer. And that's just coming from the top of kind of just after his head on the top. And then his other little front leg's gonna come down and inwards towards his antennas. And then he has one more visible leg over here and it's going to go down and back and sort of the like his thigh almost the, the part of his leg that's connected closer to his body is a bit thicker and then at the other little next piece of his legs are just a bit thinner you can see it's really coming together he's looking pretty cute okay so let's let that dry just a bit before we get into the yellow and uh white so we're gonna do um, the yellow in the bee next. So grab your yellow paint and uh, you're, you'll still need your detail brush. It's okay that it has black on it still, it's fine. Just wipe a bit of it. So for the yellow part of the bee, um, we almost wanna just dip just the very tip of the brush in, can you see, into the yellow. And it's okay if um, it blends with a bit of the black. We're just gonna do two stripes. So one's gonna be right after his head and it's gonna kind of come down in a crescent shape. It's not a straight stri stripe. It comes around his head kind of in a crescent shape. And I'm dabbing and you can see that because I want it to still have that fluffy feel like we use the dry brush, but the dry brush is difficult for details. So it's always good to have a little cheat. Um, if it helps, you can dab like the outline of your stripe before filling it in, kind of plan it out. That's fine if you like that idea. So I did one near the head, left a black area, and then did another one um, before the bum. But his bum's gonna be black, so 
kind of making sure he's got some good, good little stripes on there. So one, two, three, four stripes in this guy. And you can see that I'm starting painting at the top of his body is when I dip, because then it looks like it's highlighted. And as I dab down, it's just gonna start blending in because a little bit of the paint is coming off the brush and it'll start looking like a darker value of yellow. And perfectly that becomes the shading under his belly. So it's gonna be brighter at the top and it's gonna be darker over by his belly area. Okay, let's get the white out now and we'll do his wings. So let the yellow dry for a sec and grab yourself the white. See in our example how the wings are skinnier, closer to the, um, where they connect with the body, and then they get thicker as they go out. They're a very similar shape to our petals of our, of our daisy, except for teeny tiny. And I didn't fill them in because they're sort of see through -y and that's okay. And then the other thing to note here is, can you see how there's like a bit of white and grays in there? That's because I double dipped the teeniest, tiniest bit of black in there. You may wanna do the white first and then add the black in and then it'll kind of blend while it's wet. That's fine too if you like doing it that way or you can um, just double dip right off the get go. Either way works. So they're gonna come from the black section right after the yellow one closest to the head. So they're gonna start here and I'm gonna do one little wing going up like so. And remember with these guys, the harder you push, the thicker your line's gonna be. So if you want little dainty thinner lines, you're gonna push super gently. And his other wing's gonna come from over here and it's gonna go up a bit more and then down and back. Now you may just wanna leave them white like that. You could totally do that. They look super cute. If you wanna add a bit of the black in, that's fine too. I am putting like this much black. Can you see? Just the tip in black. Whoop, sorry, <laughs> that moved you. Um, and I'm gonna just kind of pull that through ever so slightly. And you can really gently like fill in the tips a little bit with these gray tones or a little tiny dry brushing over top so that they look kind of like a see through -y film, right? You still wanna see your bee through it though. You don't want it to be a solid, but it can have a slight, slight bit of paint on the inside to make it feel like it's see-through. It's looking good, it's looking really cute. Okay, now just, sometimes I have to make, sharpen my brush. I'm just using my fingers just to make all the bristles stick back together really nice and pointy. It's important to have a good point for this, um, for this step. So I'm dipping just the point in, and now all I'm gonna do is give him, make him look like he has an, an an eye in here just by putting a slight crescent shape and then a little highlight at the top. And there he is. There's our Mr. B. And our painting is complete. Thank you so much for tuning in and for painting with me. I have a blast doing this and I really appreciate everybody um, enjoying art as much as I do and learning and having fun with it. It's the whole point of it, right? Um, if you want to sign your artwork, you can just use either like a fine tip Sharpie is good. Or if you want to use your detail brush that we were practicing with today, you can just dip the tip in the paint if you're going to use it to sign um, and push very gently while you're signing. I can't wait to share with you our next subscription box project. It's going to be a good one. Until then, Snip Anna from Make a Mess. Peace.